You already know, I got my tissues. I got Charlie. Let's do this. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Christina. Today we are watching the last four episodes of Heartstopper Season 2. And then we have to do the excruciatingly fun part where we wait for Season 3. Which is supposed to be sometime this year, but they don't have a definitive date. So, that's a lot of fun. Honestly, it was a lot more comforting to know that I still had episodes to watch after filming every video. But now I just have to wait and see when the new season comes out. So that's going to be fun for me. I just want to say, though, first, just thank you to everyone who's joined me on this journey so far. It's been a lot of fun, and I really appreciate all the warm and loving comments I've been getting on my videos. And I know I'm rambling, so let's just get to the reaction. But first, if you like the video, please be sure to like the video. And if you'd like to see more of my reactions, please be sure to hit the subscribe button. If you want early access to the extended and uncensored versions of my reactions, you can do so on my Patreon page. The link is in the description. It is only $2.50 a month. If you also want to keep with me outside of YouTube, you can follow me on social media such as Instagram and TikTok. But to be honest, I use my Instagram a bit more. I am deaf, so I'll be using captions like usual. And Netflix actually has captions, so we're good. really care <laughs> yeah um he has some news to tell you that's your fault oh my god you did that did i do that yes i didn't mean to i uh, i don't even know how to do that to be honest it's... oh it, fairly easy i really enjoyed it we could tell you had like the little flowers around your face when it was happening what are you two doing in that you I cannot believe it! The actual- Okay, Tao's turning into like a whole dad mode right now. Uh, uh, hi. I'll be there in a minute. Oh. Help me! <laughs> Isaac just smiling. It wasn't just his fault, I was also involved. Oh, no need for the gory details. Oh, come on, Tao, don't be such a prude. Oh, who gave you that hickey? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, can you please go away? Harry, do us- <laughs> Ben, I need you to stay quiet for this one. Do us all a favor and stay quiet. I'll pack you a croissant, so if you get hungry later, we'll have a snack. Oh, That's a good way of going about- going around that. Just, you know, offer. Is it true James McEwen gave you that hickey? Oh my god, they're all like making up rumors about who gave him the hickey? It, it wasn't me. I mean, obviously you know it wasn't me. That's kind of sad. He was looking directly at Isaac when he said that. He's like, please believe it wasn't me. It wasn't me. Oh, James keeps looking over at Isaac. I, I've decided I want to go to Paris, like somewhere in the future. I want to try, is it escargot? Escar you know what? Snails. I want to try snails. Fire! Okay, I need you to stop yelling. And that's to practice your French skills. Oh. Charlie doesn't have any. Bonjour, mademoiselle. Je procure lunettes de soleil. Je veux me venger. Merci beaucoup. Je ouvre. Oui, oui, baguette. Bisous. Charlie Spring and James McEwen. That is not a good time. Nick Nelson and Ben Hope. Why is it always them two? Why are they always partnered? I don't want to go with Nick Nelson. Ooh. Sauce, rude boy. Grow up. Rude boy? Why is it always them two paired up together? Look at the butterflies. Oh, by the way, thank you to the Patreon who pointed out that William Gao is also a model. It's not just um, Elle's actress, but Tao's actor is also a model. Thank you for telling me that. Oh yeah, and also thank you to the comments that were correcting me about James. I figured he was a new character for this season, but people actually pointed out he was also in season one. So thank you for correcting me on that. That was my bad. I don't take French either. <laughs> it's me. I don't think that was used correctly. Uh, just because we're both gay means we must fancy each other. Yep, yep, that's it. I'm sure this is a very universal experience where like when queer people, when we go out and there's only like two of us who are queer in the group, everyone just automatically assumes, okay, so those two are going to hook up or they're going to kiss or they're going to date or something. It's like, you know that we also have types of people that we're attracted to, right? 
We're not just attracted to anyone who just happens to also be queer. Do you think Isaac thinks it was me? Oh. He knows it wasn't you. Yeah, no, 100%. You are completely fine. About what happened at the Paris Gym meeting? About Tao's proposal. Why is she so avoidant about this? You know what? <laughs> Never mind. I just feel weird about it because I'm sure that Darcy does love Tara. Because... Because nothing that she's done would say otherwise, you know? So I don't understand why she's being so avoidant. What do you want? You what? happy? What? You were the one who told her about me and Charlie, aren't you? No, she just figured it out. You never cared about either of them. Oh. And you didn't actually like Charlie. You just liked having control over him. <laughs> That's very true. What if I said I want Charlie back? He wouldn't want you back. You came along and you stole him from me. He's not like a toy. Charlie really liked me before you got in his head. Did he though? I don't think he did. Let's give him a hickey where everyone can see. Okay, is everyone finished? Okay, I'm not gonna say anything about it. See on the stairs and stay hydrated. Damn, you gotta go up all those stairs. You didn't get tickets for the lift? No. Oh. <laughs> Mr. Farouk. Oh, have you ever gone up the stairs of the Eiffel Tower? Let me know. Was that like was that fun for you? I'm curious. Oh wait, I also heard, doesn't it only go up like halfway up the Eiffel Tower and then the rest you have to walk up? Or is that wrong? If you guys keep holding hands, I think people are gonna figure out who gave Charlie the hickey. Stop it. Oh, Darcy. She's so dramatic. Yeah, I mean, come on, that's floor is dirty as f girl. I'm trying to figure out what snails are called in French. I'm sorry, I can't remember what it's called. Escargot. Bruh. Is that hickey from you then? Can you guys f off? What if it was? You jealous? Oh. I'm not gay. Oh, the hearts. Come on, lads. Come on. Come on. Did Harry just stick up for us? Yeah. I think he did. That's weird. Why? Why am I slowly liking Harry? Maybe we shouldn't be hanging out right now. What? More people might think it was you who. Fair. You do know it, it was me, right? <laughs> Mm -hmm. Oh, that called. Bonjour, je ne suis pas joignable pour le moment. Are we both part of the deadbeat dad club? Is that why I'm sensing? And even if something did happen, I'd still mess it up like I name one thing you've messed up. The cinema date? You were nervous. I'm basically the reason you got outed last year. Oh shit. I was talking about you with Isaac. Someone overheard and wait a damn minute. <laughs> That doesn't sound like it was your fault, though. That was like an but accident. you know that wasn't your fault, don't you? Exactly. Like, that was clearly an accident. Exactly, thank you. It's not like you purposely outed your friend. Hey, I'm Tell. Oh, they're so cute! Romeo and Juliet movie from the 90s. It's one of my- Why are you watching that? Wasn't that movie, like, rated PG-13? Why are you watching it? Cool and funny and kind you are. Aww. Are you guilt tripping me into being nice about myself? Yes. You're a good person who deserves love. Oh. Charlie, why can't you say this about yourself? Oh. Oh, that's so sweet. Charlie is such a good friend. Like this is such a like good friend group. I love them so much. I might think you gave me this hickey if you keep this up. So. <laughs> Are they actually at the Louvre? It's rubbish! What? <laughs> Darcy, it's art! Uh, and Darcy, it's art. Show me your Mona face. Yeah, I think I've heard that about the Louvre, that like, I think I've heard that like the Louvre is so big, the majority of people like make the line for the Mona Lisa and a couple of other really popular pieces of artwork. But like everywhere else in the museum is practically empty because no one else cares about any of the other stuff. They just care about the Mona Lisa. That's why I've heard. I don't know if that's actually true. Oh yeah, that's right. Because she's an artist, she can actually appreciate it. But I noticed that while she's looking at the artwork, he's looking at her. That's so cute. Like she's a piece of artwork. Oh my God. You don't always need to understand it to enjoy it. That's very true. It feels kind of romantic. Yeah. I like their friendship. They seem to be, like, very nice to each other. You don't have to understand your feelings completely to know that you like something. Just... feel. Yeah. 
<laughs> Way to scare him. Oh my god. I'm sorry, was Nick just playing matchmaker right there? What are you looking at? Oh, just a painting. Just a painting? Oh my god, was he just was he just inspiring L? <laughs> Is this still part of the loop? <laughs> I forgot he can't run. Oh, yikes. Like, he, he genuinely thinks that he still has a chance of getting back with you. Which is never going to happen. It will never happen in a million years. Are you, are you kidding me? Holly? Uh, was that an anxiety attack? Your mum takes you. <laughs> wow. Jesus. How come I've never even met your parents? Wait. Wait a minute. I feel like you're hiding stuff from me. Never met your parents. Didn't even want to say I love you back. Oh, she's actually talking about it. Casual, I love you. No, it wasn't. Honey. You know I do. Is Darcy closeted? Yes. That's what it feels like. It feels like Darcy has not told her parents that she's gay. And that's why you don't bring around your girlfriend to the house. Interesting. That's interesting. I went a picture. Is he about to faint? Charlie. Someone catch him. Someone catch him. <laughs> Thank you. And then these two have no fucking idea what's going on. Oh my god, this is so pretty. Was this actually filmed at the Lou? I would feel like it would be hella expensive to film there. It makes me want to draw. I love watching you draw. Oh, They'd be such a cute couple, like her, the artist, him, the... Cenophile is just so cute. Pink is definitely her color. The building is just so cinematic. They should make more movies in the Louvre. Chair, sure, if you wanted me to watch that actual monstrosity again. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. What's his face? What's his face? Let's just forget that hell. Wait a minute. Everybody stay calm. What's the procedure, everyone? What's the procedure? Stay what's the procedure? Stay you can force it. Ah! Oh my god, that's so cute, that's so cute. Finally, I feel like I've been waiting a century for this. Don't know how to do this. You guys are doing okay, just do what feels natural to both of you. Oh my god! You They're so cute. It feels like, oh my god, look at the butterflies. And I love it because the butterflies look more abstract than they did before. Oh my god. And look at the foot lift, look at the foot! That is so cute, bro. They're so cute. I was so afraid he was about to react badly. They're so cute. That is uncanny. And so are you. You two are very cute. And do the pose as well. I don't do poses. Yes, you do. Go. Yes, you do. Look at you. Look at you. You literally pose. Okay, whatever. <laughs> Another facial expression. <laughs> you passed out. I'm to your boyfriend though, so all good. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. Uh, I think the first time I passed out, someone actually was able to catch me. Second time, I smacked the floor really hard. There. <laughs> Look at Mr. Farouk being so caring. Oh my god. Okay, Mr. Farouk isn't that bad. Look at Mr. Ajay looking at him. I know you think he's hot. <laughs> you have nothing to be sorry about. I just, I want to understand. That's a good way of going about it, is just saying, I want to understand. Don't try to control the person into eating. You have to just try to understand their perspective. Other days I feel like I need to control it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it feels like the only thing I can control in my life. Yeah, that sounds about right. It makes sense, you can just forget it. It said does it. make sense. It makes perfect sense. I'm your boyfriend, Charlie. I really care about you. Aww. I like the... Sorry. <laughs> I like the way that Nick is going about it. It's a bit dry. <laughs> is that just a baguette with avocado? No, oh, it just sneaks up on you. She's gonna hold you for a second. Hello, Papa. <laughs> Charlie's face. Yeah, because he hasn't been there, I think, for any of the instances where Nick has spoken in French. That's funny though, he didn't know that he speaks French. You speak French. Anyway, he lives in Paris, so I've been trying to... <laughs> but 
Wait, do you like the fact that I speak French? <laughs> Okay, look, I completely understand that, Charlie. I completely get it because I am, for those of you that don't know, I am like technically a no sabo kid. My Spanish has gotten better over the years. I can definitely write, read, and understand Spanish. Uh, me speaking it, though, I sound like a 10-year-old. I sound like a child. So if I ever speak Spanish in one of my videos and I sound kind of off, that's why. But, but almost spoke Spanish, sorry. But um, the thing is, is that I can understand it. And oh my God. Like when I meet like an attractive Latina or like on the rare chances I meet like a Latino that I'm really attracted to and they speak to me in Spanish. De, desde donde estéis, gracias. Bueno, yo me llamo Itana, para quien no me conozca, soy una artista, una nueva artista. Oh my god. Oh my god. It's so, it's so. I wonder if there's like a science behind why we're attracted to people that we think are attractive and that speak a foreign language. Like I want to know, is that like a thing? Because I'm a no sabo kid. So the thing is, then they talk to me in Spanish and I'm like, oh, I feel so like, whoo. And then I try to respond and I sound like a child. Immediately turns off the romance. <laughs> Seriously, when I met this girl. Oh, wait, I'm, I'm getting I'm, I'm getting sidetracked. Let's get back to the show. Mon amour. Oh. <laughs> like you're cringing. You look like you're blushing. I am not. Lot, I would be blushing like mad. Are you joking? Although, although, wait a minute. I'm sorry. I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep harping on this. My best friend, my childhood best friend, her first language was Spanish, and then she spoke English. She kind of talks to me about the fact that she doesn't like when other native Spanish speakers will talk to her in Spanish. She's like, eh, about it. But when her husband, I'm sorry. Yes, husband. I keep calling him a fiance. I was literally at their wedding. I was a maid of honor. They're married. Her husband will like talk in Spanish to her sometimes or like he'll try to talk in Spanish to her because he's not fluent. And she's like, yes, yes, keep talking, even though he sounds like a 10 year old. So for all I know, some of the Latinas I've spoken to in my broken, horrible Spanish don't mind it. I hope. Sure, Jan. You ever mentioned your dad before? He's not really a big part of my life anymore since he lives here and... Okay, Debbie Dad Club, got it. I had this idea that I might introduce you to him. Yeah? Yeah? I was gonna say, that makes me a little bit worried because David kind of mentioned something about when they were fighting, he said something along the lines of can you imagine what dad's going to think or something like that? He made it seem like dad's homophobic. So I'm a little worried about you introducing your boyfriend. All right, let's see how this goes. Okay, end of the episode. Uh, next episode, please. Next episode. I just noticed they just ran away from their school trip. Is that allowed? Truth or Dare? Or that's what I'm assuming from the title. I'm Charlie. Nice to meet you, Charlie. Coffee. Okay, so he knows English. So, you mean Nick? Well, yeah, of course he knows English. She's literally was with Nick's mom. Of course he, sorry, kind of forgot. When do you graduate? Must be soon now. Uh, I've still got two more years left. Mm-hmm. I would have invited you this summer, but the apartment is a mess. You know, I'd still like to meet her sometime if you wanted me to. Someday soon. Hmm? Second her. Um, the Louvre this morning. Yeah. It's been really fun. Oh, the phone call that's always so triggering. Oh, God. Debbie Dad Club. Something has come up and I just can't get out of it. Hmm, very convenient. I'm coming to England next week. Oh. Did you come to dinner? David will want to see you. I miss that boy. Yeah, your 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 son's kind of a piece of work. Oh, what's up, Rita? Huh? Wow. That was fast. Yeah. He just doesn't. He doesn't know me. Yeah, the only thing he kept talking about was like rugby. rugby. Exactly. 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 That's it. That's so unfortunate. The whole way there. It's okay, Nick. I understand. He's still not found her. Oh. Where's Wally? Has Tao told them, by the way? I have something to share. Okay. Me and El kissed. 
Me, Isaac. <laughs> we kissed. <laughs> of course the girls are screaming. I swear I've seen birds do this on Wild Kingdom. I thought it was a mistake. But it wasn't a mistake. And then we <laughs> so hard, so happy. Oh my god, you did it! And then Isaac. What does this mean? Are, are you two dating? So you need to talk to her. Yeah. Yes, yes, you need to have a talk. I have to ask him to be your boyfriend. I'm sure he'll say yes. Yes. Go Guys, to. Oh, yes, here we go! <laughs> oh, this is so cute. Sneaking around this late? How late is it? <laughs> Come on, it's like you can't be exploring the hotel? Aww. Isaac. Ooh. Darcy just left Tara there? <laughs> oh my god, I love the lighting here. <laughs> What were you gonna say? Uh, I, I, I forgot. You knew what you were gonna say. You just want to keep kissing her. I mean, it's so cute. If you even think about giving me another hickey, I wasn't thinking you about so that. Well. <laughs> Please be careful about how loud you're talking in the middle of a hotel hallway. Charlie, you literally fainted on me today. But how are you feeling about seeing your dad? He keeps avoiding it. Only I realized how stressed out you've been about it. And he keeps trying to bring it back. I guess just about everything. You're not special, Charlie. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's funny. Matters to me. Oh my god, he's so sweet. Boys! Such a good boy. Should be in your room. Oh, it's packed 11. Damn! Okay. <laughs> Look at these two. Pretty sure I did the exact same thing at that age with a boy. <laughs> Mr. is like, signaling, signaling, here's my flag. You never did anything like that? Oh, and you don't figure out your game until your late 20s. Double, double, one, I must. Tend to miss out on those beautiful gay teenage experiences. Oh. 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 So he felt comfortable telling Mr. Ajay about that. Hmm. Probably a bit late for me to have any. I don't think there's an age limit on those, to be honest. That's. I like that. That's a very good point. You flirt on me. Yes. Maybe. <laughs> oh my god, Mr. Rook's face. Should head back. Oh my god, that was so cute. I hope they end up together actually. I was I was already shipping it before it even happened, okay? Oh, they are gonna be a handful today. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Well you know it. They're away from home, they're in a hotel, they're gonna make some use of it. I'm sorry for being, you know, not a very good girlfriend recently. I've got plans. Big plans. Oh. Okay. Wonder if her parents are involved in that. Nope. Imogen is so cute and she's still wearing that beret. It's just so cute. Oh look, a bookstore. We're right in Isaac's element. <laughs> that is so cute. Isaac! Oh my god. It's okay, he'll get through those in like one week. No, not even, like two days, tops. Did he just add another book to this pile? You go ahead, we'll, we'll meet you there. If you wanted some privacy with Nick, you could just say so. Oh, oh please. After how you behaved this morning, being all like, you, 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 you acted like a father. Are you kidding? Just stay here for a bit. Why not? We haven't kissed in like two days. <sighs> right. <laughs> We're gonna be late. <laughs> oh, what a tease. I hate you. No, you like me. Damn. Oh, yeah, this is a hotel party. Okay. Hotel room party, sorry. You're perfect for Tara. She's a princess. And yet, you won't say you love her. There's something not right here. Surprise! Oh my god, they're so cute. I love the crown. Ooh, alcohol. You're on your own, sir. This can only end in tears. Oh my god. Guys. Oh. Oh. Yeah, you gotta take the glasses off. They always get in the way. Yeah, yeah, you got your privacy with Nick. Let him get his privacy with Elle, okay? No, oh, Isaac. He's so alone. And surrounded by people kissing. Oh my god. I would just dip. I would roll out. <laughs> 
Exactly. I might just roll out. Why are you here? Do you even know Darcy? Am I missing something? Why is he there? There you are. There's James. Do they all think the hickey was you? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, yes, they do. I sort of had a crush on him last year. <laughs> really? Uh, I do have a crush on someone else, though. Yes? You gonna say who it is? Come on. Say it. Is it me? Or he can just ask. That's very forward, but that works. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God, though. He doesn't like kissing. Oh, James. Bad, or I've just never kissed anyone before, so. That was his first kiss? I'm sorry. Heavy in the basement of oh, I'm sorry, James. Oh, that's so sad, look at him. So even though I'm not a oh, Isaac. Poor baby. I think he's just so confused. Whoa, this shot, this shot. I want to stay out with each other. Seeing Isaac upset really got me. Ooh, ooh, that got me. Wait a sec. But it's alcohol time. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, that's wow. a Honey, honey, Darcy. Enjoy. Jesus, that's like half alcohol. Was that Smirnoff, by the way? I feel like that was Smirnoff. Okay. Oh, that's gonna taste disgusting. Oh, that is disgusting. <laughs> exactly. It is not that bad. No, it is. It is, it is. When you put half alcohol, pure alcohol, yes. <laughs> They're gonna be one of the teachers. I have a feeling. What do you want? Oh, Harry. I invited you to my party. Yeah, well, no homophobes at my back. Oh. Can I not just talk to Nick and Charlie? Why? Why do you want to talk to them? I just wanted to say I'm sorry. I know I've said some homophobic stuff in the past. Uh. Really? Are we cool? Can we come in? No. 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 <laughs> oh damn that was a good though that was a good move i like that that was a good move i don't know i don't know how i feel about that oh ben stop looking i don't know how i feel about harry because it does seem like he's trying because like there's been two instances so far in the season where he's not actually that bad of a person so i don't know if he's actually genuinely being honest or if he just wanted to go party I'm sure someone will be able to tell me in the comments because I'm I'm very reluctant to believe Harry's becoming a good person after everything he's done. Although it is kind of funny that I have more hope in Harry than I do Ben. That's that says something about Ben. Oh, is this where the bad part comes? You know, we just saw the perks of being a wallflower, and we know that did not go well. So this makes me wonder. I don't really have any celebrity crushes. Ah, uh, come on, everybody has celebrity crushes. <laughs> Okay, so obviously some of you know that some of my my celebrity crushes were like Courtney Cox, Rose McGowan. Um, who else did I used to have a crush on? I used to also have a crush on Lucy Hale. I used to have a crush on Hayden Penn. And <laughs> a lot of women, a lot of women. <laughs> and then when it came to men, I think I've only had two in my lifetime that I can really, really remember. And one of them was Rami Malek because... The weirdo vibes that he like puts off in most of his roles, it does something for me. I don't know what it is. And then the other one was, because I think he's just gorgeous to look at. He looks like a statue. Is, um, what's his face? Dacre Montgomery from Stranger Things. I've only had like a couple of male celebrity crushes, which is those two. And then I have like a whole Rolodex of all the female celebrity crushes I've had. <laughs> Golly. Oh? Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh. At least Nick's not jealous. He knows it's just like a friendly thing. I love Tao because it seems like he clearly does not give a shit about what other people think. And I love that. He's very much 100% himself. And I can respect that about a person. I dare Charlie to kiss James. Really? Why? 
It's the hickey rumor. It wasn't James. There, Charlie, to kiss. Ben. Oh. No way. Oh. Really no, Charlie. Can you stop lying? This game is so stupid. I'm tired anyway. <laughs> Always making a scene. That's funny. Can I do a truth instead? Who gave you the hickey? Why won't they let this go? Tara's very considerate. I like that she said that. I know who it was. Oh. We're dating. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I can it. Really oh. But I guess yeah. Nick was gay. Yeah. Why does everyone assume? Thank you. Bye. Do you want us do you want us to keep it a secret? Oh, James, thank you for asking. Oh my god, that's so sweet. We're okay with people knowing. Very lovely moment, but I think I'm gonna be sick. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, with all the alcohol you've been drinking. So I just wanna say really quickly, I love how Nick did that. And especially because Ben left, because you know, Ben. But I like it because since Ben left, I guess he felt very comfortable around that group of people to come out. And I love that. I think that's so great. They waited till they were in like, in what they would consider a safe space to do it. I love that. I love that it's with people who clearly weren't going to judge him, weren't going to say anything. Like, you know, not Harry, not any of his mates, and not Ben. I love it. Although, could you imagine Ben's face if he was there? I'm just a bitch. <laughs> okay, back to Darcy being sick. Going to pretend I believe you have food poisoning. Oh. I can't look. I can't look. I can hear it. Why did I get into teaching? Mr. Farouk. Were you not a teenager once? Even if you weren't out yet or didn't know that you were gay yet, you had teenage experiences. Come on. You came out to a room full of people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was a big move. Do you think everyone in school is going to know about it? 100%. Yes. You guys are all alone in a hotel room. Where are the other two? Since Tom and Isaac are staying in the girls' room tonight, how would that happen? With you? Oh. I think you're gonna have to move over because that's my side of the bed. Mm, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna fall on top of him. I knew it. You're gonna have to fight. Okay. You can fight. <laughs> <laughs> Is this gonna go somewhere? Because, I mean, opportune moment. Why does he look worried? Is this okay? Yeah. He's not regretting coming out, right? I'm, I'm not sure I'm ready to do anything more than kissing. Understandable. I didn't think we did that right now. <laughs> yeah, Nick, way to assume. What, do you think Charlie's just putting it out to every person he meets? I do, I do want to. Yeah. What? Me too. They want to. Girl. <laughs> 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 look at them, they're so cute. Where's Isaac? And look at Sahara and I mentioned they're so cute. And he's not reading. I'm sorry for reading your birthday. It's not wrong. Yeah, you just got a little sick. I have to be perfect for you. That's interesting. I love you. Um I love you so much. You're a little drunk. I know it sounds like I don't mean it because I'm drunk. Yeah. Really do mean it. Okay, well, I never doubted it. I just thought it was weird that you were so reluctant to say it. I'm ready now to swim. Ooh, you guys are having wine together? She can't get in trouble for having food poisoning, can she? Oh, Mr. Farouk. Okay, nice. That's pretty cool, actually. I was I'd better head down to reception, try and get some fresh sheets. Or you can share each other's bed, yes. You could just share my bed. Ah! Sorry. Shh. No, 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 no. <sighs> oh, his face. He looks so nervous. I don't think it's a stupid idea. They got me kicking my feet and shit over here. They're so cute. Look at his smile. Oh my god. This is so cute. Okay, they're adults, so we know what they're gonna do. <laughs> oh my. Mr. Ajay, you're so forward. Mm -hmm. 
I hate myself. Every time I hear Super 8, I don't think, or I read Super 8, I don't think of like the film Super 8. I think of Super Ocho, which is a candy that you can get from Chile. I don't know if it's in any of the other countries in South America, but I know it's from Chile. And I love Super Ocho. I love Super Ocho. Anytime my family visits from Chile, I always ask, can you bring me Super Ocho? Bring me like a box and I make it last throughout the year. Yes, it gets stale, but I don't care. It's still good. Also, shout out to all the Chilenos who watched my Heartstopper videos. I saw a few of the comments on the last video and I love every single one of you guys. It's so cool to know that you watch my videos. Watch that oh, look at that. Yeah, you know, I sleep okay by myself, but when I have someone next to me, whether it's like my partner or a friend or something, I sleep like a hundred times better. I don't know if there's some science behind that, but definitely for me, that's how it feels. Oh. There we go. It's starting. It's starting already. I love Send the Pop. Oh. oh. Are you away? Oh. If she knew I was letting your girlfriend sleep over. Granny would have a heart attack okay. if she knew I was a lesbian. Good point. I think he's still a little bit worried about Charlie's eating habit. I was sitting on the train, my what? Can we not? I thought he would have blocked him by now. She said, well, so naive. Oh my god. How is Tao gonna feel about it though? I'm kind of freaking out about that earlier. Me and Elle decided to get together. <laughs> Look how excited she is. Oh my god. The perfect double, my perfect bling. Oh. To call Auntie Lee and Auntie not, Sang. Not, we're not. <laughs> I'll be waiting for this. Who's we? Who, who's been waiting for this? Who's we? That's so cute though, how happy she is. Your dad called, he's coming for dinner next week. Could we invite Charlie over? Yeah, that's a lovely idea. How nice. come Nick gets to invite someone and I don't? Do you have a girlfriend you'd like to invite, David? Oh, damn. Just got roasted by your mom. My summer is for sleeping, not visiting old museums. Oh wait, I'm sorry, this is summer? Oh right, this is summer. They're done with school for the year, right? By the way, I like this. I feel like we don't get to see Tori and Charlie interact that much outside of her slurping her drink. Mum will love that. She's not exactly Nick's biggest fan, is she? I forgot about that. No, you don't. Go away. Block his Instagram, please. If you're gonna do anything, I implore you to block him. He has no right to be talking to you. <laughs> That's a heart with a guitar? That's so cute. And she has a flag on it. It's interesting because he's typing that, but he doesn't look angry, if that makes sense. That's a more neutral question. Pretty good. Not gonna tell him the truth yet? Like the email says she got in, right? What's up with you? I, I'm very curious about what's happening with Darcy right now. That felt very ominous. Like there's a dark energy in that house. Meet up with James. Oh my God, they're gonna kiss! Oh, uh, about that. Oh, he hasn't told them. I just clocked that. He didn't tell them about the kiss. Go away. Block him. Block him. I think I'm gonna go to prom. Really? Be my prom date? Yes. Really? Yes, just say yes. And I don't want to wear matching suits. Oh, me neither. No, please don't do that. Please. That is so cute. They're going to prom together. You got in, didn't you? Oh. <laughs> I don't know how Tao will take it. <laughs> oh my god, look at him. Oh my god. <laughs> oh wow. Maybe without the shoes, but it looks great. If I could afford it, I haven't got much left after Paris. No, it's fine. I've got the I've got seven. Oh, that's so sweet. They're all piling up money to help her get the suit. That's so sweet. God, I love this group of friends. They're such a good group of friends. So I'm guessing you don't feel the same about me then? I don't know how I'm supposed to feel. I thought that I might feel that way, but then we kissed and I just knew that I didn't. So does he not actually like James? I think there might be something wrong with me. There's nothing wrong with you, honey. You're just ace and you don't know it yet. <laughs> Can you guys just shut up? I'm sorry to break it to you. I don't like him back. Fine, I just, 
I don't want to talk about it. I think he's just having a really hard time processing how he feels. Asexuality is not very talked about. So when people are asexual and they don't know it, they just feel like they're broken. A cute couple. I love them. And I can't wait to see what art you make when you start with in September. Oh, spill the beans. Why don't you? Wonder how Tao's gonna feel about this. It's my one. Really? I like it. What's it about? Basically about my experience being aromantic and asexual. This is definitely someone you want to talk to. Something about you is different, but you don't have the words to describe what that is. Euphoria of freeing yourself from those pressures and expectations. This is good to like talk to someone who can kind of explain your feelings. Jesus Christ, mum. I already told her to leave early. Literally not. By the way, Darcy's outfit, I just love it. The top and like the space buns, pigtails. So you guys can't tease me about being the token ally anymore. <laughs> Way to assume. I'm bisexual. Exactly. You don't assume. <laughs> Interesting. If I leave it any longer, I'll just make it more angry. Your mom seems like a bitch. Oh my god, Brittany. You were thinking it. I know, but you said I it. I know, I know. <laughs> you still coming to prom tomorrow? I'm a little concerned. Like, her mom abusive because I feel like this is going somewhere very dark. Trans artists we have here at the Lambert School. Is that Rebecca Root? She was in Queen's Gambit, right? I believe she's also a trans actress. Would you like to say a few words about your piece? I've been a lot of changes in my life over the last couple of years. I guess I wanted to capture a place that holds a lot of happy memories. Somewhere I always felt safe. Oh, that's so pretty. I'm sorry, that's even better than what I thought it was gonna be. I'm sorry. <laughs> That just made me really emotional. It's so sweet. Oh, that really got me. All I care about is you being happy, and I'll still want to be with you. That is so mature. I'm so proud of you, Tao. You've definitely grown up in like the past few episodes. Sorry, that painting got me. That's so sweet that like her safe space is her friends. I think that's the confirmation that she knows. Like, like in a different <laughs> room. What the f are you doing here? What the fuck? Are you stalking him? Oh, I feel like I my- I just want to apologize. Apologize? If you really hate me after this, you'll never see me again. I feel like you dried up my tear ducts really fast. I'm a messed up person, Charlie. We already knew this. I liked you. Did you? Did you really though? Are we sure? I really liked you. Are you sure about that? I'm sorry for everything. You were something good. Um, I don't know if I accept it. Do you remember the first time you kissed me? You didn't even ask. Seems to be a pattern with him. This must be what I deserve. And now you want me to forgive you so you can feel better about yourself. It's what it feels like, right? But you don't get to ambush me into forgiving you. Yeah, you've been hounding him. I really hope you become a better person so you don't hurt anyone else. But I don't want to be there to see that happen. That's completely valid. That's very interesting imagery there. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing about apologies. It's that even if you are sincere in your apology or whatever, that doesn't mean the other person has to accept it. I like what Charlie said though about the whole idea of like, I really hope you become a better person, but I'm not going to be there to see it. That's extremely valid. <laughs> Do we need to pretend to be platonic BFFs in front of your dad? 
Russian platonic BFFs. Bro. <laughs> Supportive straight friend, Charlie. Supportive straight friend, I remember that. That's from season one, right? <laughs> David? David. Shh. You guys should come. Look at the way he's looking at them. I swear to God. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah, stop looking at them. I don't like David. He makes me very uncomfortable. I don't feel right about him. How's it been since he got here? It's been fine. <laughs> Pretty civil to have dinner with your ex-husband. He's got no right to know. You don't owe him a thing. Yes. It's very correct. I'm not doing it for him. I'm doing it for me. That's also very valid. And my father's from the south of Spain. Almeria. Oh, yeah. Oh. So he is Spanish. Okay. Like Spaniard. Okay. Do you visit often, Stefan? As much as I can. Really? Do you, though? Insane. Work isn't yeah. everything, you know. All Tori, her face. Dad, has Nick told you how he met Charlie? Shut up. Shut the fuck up. Is <laughs> was obsessed with getting Charlie to join. Wonder mm. why. Shut the fuck up. What is your problem? Thank you, Tori. It's a very attractive sport to women. Ooh. Have neither of you boys find girlfriends? No, sir. Oh, next too interested in looking for girlfriends, really. Don't you dare. Oh, woo -hoo -hoo. I like Tori like this. Sorry, this is ridiculous. Charlie's my boyfriend. I don't care what you think about it anymore. Because you don't care to even see us more than two times a year. Oh my god, oh my god. And I don't know why you're acting like you are ten years old. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was funny. I like who I am. I like my life. You have a very good life. Always causing a fuss. You need to shut the f*** up! Well, I'm pleased you said what you said. Especially to your dad. <laughs> he's not a very good dad. No, he's not. That's okay though, because Olivia Coleman is your mom and that's all you need. Why doesn't he care? That's a hard question to answer, baby. I think it's a very sad way to exist. Yeah. I, I want to be better. And just say it. Dad. Uh, David, go away. Call me when you get back to Indenburg, huh? Glasgow. Damn, man, are you serious? Do you not know anything about your f***ing children? It seems like a very nice young man. Okay, that's a pretty okay reaction. Better than being a homophobe. Oh my god. I can feel it. I feel it in the corner of my eyes. So cringe. He's made such a big deal out of telling our dad. Oh no, Tori, what are you gonna do? It's Drama Queen boyfriend's influence. That's it. Oh. You are a pathetic little man. <laughs> and I'll end you. <laughs> and in that moment, David fell in love. Because I sure as hell would have. <laughs> He, the way he's looking at her, too, it doesn't help. He's a nice boy, when he's not distracting you from your coursework. Okay, mom finally approves of him. Charlie's mom is now on the train, the Nick train, so we're all good. Charlie didn't eat very much. Yeah, he's still not eating. Oh. You know, I'm very surprised. I didn't really expect this show to go with the more serious, mature topics, such as eating disorders. I like it, though. I'm kind of glad they're talking about it. Why is she laughing? Yeah, this doesn't feel good. She, she's leaving. She's actually kicking her daughter out? Are you serious? Over a f***ing suit? Okay, at least she didn't hit her. I was worried she was gonna hit her. I do like the use of like the purple cloud smoke, like emphasizing that there's like this negative energy in that house. Been in plenty of houses where there's like nothing but purple fog everywhere. Poor Darcy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bi, actually. Yeah, I feel like you have to clarify because people just love to assume. Everything's perfect. So we're gonna go to prom. He really has like a big thing about things being perfect, which I completely understand. I was the same way when I was younger, but reality hits pretty hard. Ooh, I like this. I like this. Do you want to be my girlfriend? 
Was that a serious question? Uh, I would think the answer would be obvious. You're being weird, you're being weird. Oh my god, they're so cute. Where's... So I'm guessing Darcy didn't tell her about being kicked out? I'm texting the gang of boys, we're literally not gonna have a call. Oh, that's so cute. She has like a group of friends she can rely on when things go wrong. Look at the gang rolling up and look at her. She is so beautiful. I can't get over how beautiful she is. Oh, oh God. God. Uh, <laughs> same here. Did you just paint her clothes? I would kill you. You should uh, invite him tonight. Oh my God, he told her about what happened in Paris. You should bring your wife. Mm -hmm. I kind of like that we're also getting a peek into the adults' lives, too. Uh, you're gonna go ask? Really? Sure, you guys are going out. Yeah. I didn't know you were gay, Nick. I told you. I didn't believe you, you know. I said you <laughs> Why does everyone just assume he's gay? I just... Okay. Honey, later. I had a really late breakfast, so... Okay, Charlie. Oh my god, look at how covered in paint. Oh my god. Crisp. Oh. I like this. They're finally starting to seem like friends. They're all idiots for assuming you're straight. And I'm including myself in that statement. <laughs> I was gonna say, didn't you assume that he was straight in season one? I know, I, th I think he's been finding all the attention a lot. That's understandable. All the things that happened to him in the past, they all really have affected him. I think when something really bad happens, it can affect you for a really long time. That's very true. My dad died when I was 12, and I think a lot of the reason I get so freaked out about losing my friends is because losing him was just like... Yeah. Kind of surprised how I was being so vulnerable with Nick. Don't be weird about it. <laughs> That's a sweet moment. I like that they're finally warming up to each other. At least Tao's warming up to Nick. Yeah, Charlie never really talked to me about it. Me neither. Okay, so he really does keep it like bottled up inside. Oh my god, look how handsome he looks. But for the record, I think you always look cute. <laughs> I can't believe you're my boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. He looks so cute. I think it's such a cute outfit. How about we don't go to prom? We just stay here instead. <laughs> Oh my god, Charlie. This is just a figment of his imagination. Yeah. Yep. Yes, it is. But that was cute. I don't know. If I haven't heard from my girlfriend in a while, and she, and I know we're supposed to have like a big thing happening today, I would be like genuinely worried about her. Like, very worried. Oh, picking out his outfit. Oh. He doesn't even want to read. Oh my god. Your intentions you with my own? I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> Tao's face is how I feel right now. My god, she looks great in anything she wears. I swear to god. She could be wearing a trash bag and she would still look amazing. Suspenders. Tao looks amazing. That's a very much Tao outfit. And Sahar looks gorgeous. And she's playing the guitar. How cool. Let's just open a bit. Let's just go. Not gonna tell them. I think you should be telling them. You should be telling your friends. Okay, um, <laughs> I like the photo booth part. It's really nice. <laughs> why is it why not? Because it's so embarrassing just standing there on my own. Right. <laughs> Yes. So is Isaac also a romantic? Well, yes. I can't believe Nick's the first hour of us in a relationship. <laughs> Aww. It's Tara Jones single. She's gay. <laughs> that was Otis, right? I like him. I kind of like that. They were trying their best to show their support with the small talk, you know, in their own straight heterosexual way. They were showing their support. <laughs> exactly. This is the exact response I would have to her not answering for hours. This is so cute. I love this. They make such a beautiful couple. What the f***? 
and tell with his nice moves. I just noticed they got their pa their faces painted. That's so funny. I'm going to go to Lambda. Hello. He's still going to support you, honey. Don't worry about it. Oh, look at the butterflies being all like neon lights. Oh. Just take it. Just nick it. Nick it. She looks like she'd rather be anywhere else. Yusuf. Nathan and Yusuf. Come on. Said you needed more chaperones. Oh, you know it's more than that. Pretty stupid thing for us to do. Shh. No, it wasn't. Shh. Dinner and drinks next time. That is so smooth. That is so slick. Oh, there's Emma Jen. I was wondering where she was. Lips to breathe your name. Yes, Nick, Nick the book. Nick the book. But wait a second, can we go back to Imogen looking at Sahar like that? Wait a minute. Is our token ally actually bisexual? Huh. Interesting. It feels weird. What, holding hands? Dance or so, like get a photo or something. Okay, I thought he meant the holding hands part and I was about to get personally offended for Charlie. Can we leave? What? We've been so obsessed with the idea of coming out. Gotten why we wanted to do it in the first place. That's a good point. I just want to have a fun night with you and our friends. I do have a free house. Yeah. Oh. So are you okay? Uh, where have you been? She looks so disheveled. You went to find you. Oh, not at the house. She never met the parents and she's never been to the house. Let's see how this goes. She said she was coming to our school prom tonight. Is she okay? And how would I know that? Okay, bitch. Over an outfit, can you believe? She looked like a lesbian. I'm about to beat this bitch up. So... They didn't even know that she's a lesbian. Love you guys. God, I love this friend group. I love it so much. That you didn't feel as confident about being a lesbian as I did. <laughs> I'm not even out to my own parents. Yeah, well, they don't seem like nice people. At least the mom. I'm not confident. Sometimes my mom makes me hate myself. What if that person doesn't even exist? You were scared to say it back because you didn't really believe that I could love you. I'm a literal disaster. Oh, I know. <laughs> so... In love with you. I'm bad at saying it. Practice makes perfect. Took the words right out of my mouth. Exactly. This is so sweet. Because she really loves Darcy for all of who she is, including who her parents are. I love you! I love you. I love you. <laughs> it was kind of boring anyway. Yeah, for real. I mean, it was boring without Darcy there. Oh, this is so cute. Look at this. In the summer, cross your heart. Also, I'm really glad that the friends gave them some room for privacy. That was sweet. <sighs> what is this? What is that? Ah, oh, man. The show gets me. This is so sweet. You went to rugby oh. summer camp. <laughs> of course he did. I think I had a crush on the instructor. Didn't realize it at the time, but looking back now, that, that's a very common experience, at least for me anyways. There's a lot of things that when I look back, I'm like, oh. Oh. It's like, it's really bad. There's so many things from my childhood that I'm like, now that I look back, I'm like, girl. Really? Tell me something. The bullying. Yeah, that's a lot. Everything's fine now. Is everything fine? Exactly. Thank you for asking. You don't have to be perfect with me. Physically builds himself into a ball. We said we tell each other things. I think it surprised me how homophobic people are. Me too. I was also under the assumption before I came out. And it went on for so long that I think I started to believe what they were saying. So much so. I used to cut myself sometimes. I don't want to feel like that anymore. 
Oh, Nick. Don't make me cry. You promised to tell me if it ever gets that bad again. I just don't want to annoy you or burden you. It's not being annoying or being a burden. He loves you and he wants to support you and help you and take care of you. There's a difference. This isn't Ben Hope. That was scary in the past few months because you were there. And I want to be that for you too. You're my boyfriend. Please promise me. I love your hair so much. <laughs> I love. Oh. This close. This. Vicky, I'm home. Of course. Just when she gets home. Okay, cool. Cool. Thanks, Mom. We were in the middle of a moment. That was such a sweet conversation between the both of them, though. I think they really needed to have that conversation. Okay, I think I'm okay. I think I'm okay. Um, can we not do this over text? I mean, I get it. It's a very big move, but don't do it over text. Is he gonna send it? Is he gonna send it? What the fuck? I have to wait till season three. Okay, cool. 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 Thanks. Thanks. I can't believe that was the end. At least we get season three, right? <laughs> Can you believe we gotta wait till season three to see what happens? That's some bullshit. Hi. Hi. So those are the final episodes of Heart Stopper season two. Let's talk about it. So I just want to focus on a couple of things when it comes to the production of season two. The cinematography, the color grading, and the locations that were used. So I noticed a bit of a difference in the cinematography this season, both with the lighting and the use of the camera. I thought I was probably just imagining it, but I checked to confirm, and it's not just me. This season has a completely new cinematographer by the name of Simona Susnia. I hope I said that right. This season takes place during this kid's summer holiday and their end-of-the-year field trip to Paris, you know, the city of love. So it's understandable why Susnia went with a more saturated, colorful lighting such as this little scene between Tao and Elle and even the dance scene between them at prom. And just overall, there was a lot more use of bright lighting in general. Along with this, the color grading seemed to be a lot more saturated than in the first season, which had more cool tones to it and slight desaturation. Again, this is probably due to the second season taking place during the summer where romance is blooming between a lot of the characters and it's just a more, quote, fun time for the kids. I'm not sure if season two has the same color as season one, Tobias James Tompkins, but his work in season one was so wonderful. And if he's also responsible for season two, it still holds up very well, despite that it's a different palette. So this time we spent a couple of episodes in Paris and I think I asked during the reaction about whether or not the production actually did film at the Louvre. Turns out, not really. There were obvious shots that were filmed at the Louvre, but turns out they also used several different locations as a substitute for some of the scenes, such as the National Gallery and the Dulwich Gallery in London. Despite this though, the majority of the other shots during the Paris trip this season were actually filmed in Paris, and the cast shared how much they enjoyed the few days they spent filming there. This has convinced me to travel there in the future, because my god, it does look gorgeous. If there's one thing I'm a sucker for, it's beautiful buildings and sights. I just suck at speaking French though, so I'm gonna have to work on that. You don't have to understand your feelings completely. So this season, a lot of faves have returned, of course, but we also got a few new characters introduced as well. Let's start with the ones I like the least and work up to my new faves. Jack Barton plays David, Nick's older brother who is home for the summer holiday, and my god, does he do a good job at playing an absolute trash can of a human being? The arrogance is so good. Every time he came up on screen, I felt my body turn in on itself. Although I will admit, I did feel like a tiny little bit sad for him near the end when we came to realize that Nick's father doesn't know anything about either one of his children, not even where they study, my God. Speaking of Nick's father, forgive me if I butchered this, the Bout de Mont de la Bert. Oh my God, I hate myself. 
The boat de Montalbert placed a fawn, Nick's estranged father from Paris, which really surprised everyone on the show, not just the audience watching, which confused me at first, but now I get it. Thank you, by the way, to those who corrected me on why Brits and Parisians don't really mix often. The historical feud is definitely something I can understand, so thank you for explaining. <laughs> That's all I needed to know. Stefan pissed me off on more than one occasion. I made a joke about Nick and I being part of the deadbeat dad club, but damn. He really is. He doesn't know what year his son is at the academy and doesn't even know where his oldest goes to for uni. It's all very, very sad. But I did like that Nick was able to stand up for himself against his father at the dinner table. It is a really tough thing to have to be okay with not caring about someone else's thoughts or opinions when it is clear that they do not care about you in the slightest. Stefan does speak about wanting to do better before leaving though, so we'll see if that goes anywhere in season 3. James is played by Bradley Vicious, and although people have corrected me and told me that he was introduced in season 1 for a brief moment, I figured that he deserved to be mentioned here since he is definitely a lot more involved in the story this time around. I love this character. Similar to Isaac, he just has this wholesome air around him and the actor plays it very well. Even his kiss was Isaac seemed incredibly soft and gentle. The character overall just seems to be sweet and clearly very understanding since he didn't react negatively to Isaac explaining to him that he wasn't interested in him like that. I kind of hope that we get to see more of him in season three since he kind of became part of the group during their adventures in Paris. I wouldn't mind seeing him getting a love interest of his own who actually reciprocates the same feelings. I think it's only because I felt so sorry for him after he confessed to Isaac that it was his first kiss. Like, you reserve that shit for someone you really, really like when you're young. So that's just, I need him to find a nice boy, please. Sahar is played by Layla Khan. What a cool last name, by the way. A lot of people were leaving comments saying I look like her, which I don't see it personally, but she's very pretty. So I'll take the compliments where I can get them. Besides that, I love Sahar. I think she and James are definitely some of my new faves this season. I love how as the season went on, we got new little tidbits of information about her character. She seemed like just a very normal girl in the first scene where we meet her, but we learn that she's genuinely like a cool person within the show. Her makeup looks are beautiful. She's very friendly with everyone in the group, like a capybara. She plays guitar and she's a bisexual queen. Loves it. Like I said, I think she and James are definitely some of my new favorite characters, and I hope we get to see more of them as the show goes on. Is everyone ready for Paris? So there's a bit to cover in this section, but I'll try to condense it as much as possible. We'll be starting with the more light subjects first, then go into the more mature subjects that the show covered. Here's a quick content warning in case anyone needs it. So let's just start off with something that's cute, which is Elle and Tao's relationship. Finally blossoming this season, it started off a bit rocky as they usually do. I was very upset for the first few episodes because it felt like one of my favorite ships on the show was just sinking to the bottom of the ocean and I didn't like it at all. But Paris is the city of love and my god Elle just went for it. <laughs> which is funny since I believe Darcy said something about how they just needed to kiss to get over the awkwardness of trying to navigate their feelings. Girl was 100% correct. Both the actors have amazing chemistry together and you can definitely see it through the screen so after they finally share their first kiss everything just seemed to fall into place from that point onwards. Thank you to Alice Osman for that because I don't think I could have handled a scenario in which it didn't work out. I just, I couldn't. I've been shipping them since season one and I needed that. Isaac being Arrow Ace was something I was not expecting. I think this is the first time I've seen Arrow Ace representation on a show. I've seen only a, one other instance of asexuality representation on a show, which was Heartbreak High, if anyone is interested. I enjoyed the show a lot, but it's definitely a bit more mature than Heartstopper, so brace yourself for that. But this is definitely my first exposure to Arrow Ace representation ever in media. Both asexuality and aromanticism aren't really discussed enough, even within the queer community, and are usually written off as not being real. Except that they are. They are 100% real. I've had and do have friends who identify as either one or both, and because neither asexuality nor 
gay romanticism are ever discussed in society, they went a long time without realizing why they felt different compared to their friends or family. They essentially felt what Isaac did when he was at the bookstore, which was that something was wrong with them. I put in a few book suggestions I got recommended during the reaction because I think back on how much my friends struggled, whether they were dating or in relationships with partners who didn't understand how they felt, and it breaks my heart to think of others who are going through the same exact thing. I believe Alice Osman themselves is also Aero Ace, so it explains why they felt comfortable enough to write about this. And I think it's great that they're willing to write about it because we don't see either asexuality or aromanticism often in media. And I think it's something that society definitely needs to explore and find ways to understand and accept it as part of people's identities. Isaac is still definitely at the top of my faves list right after Nick and Charlie. I'm so glad we got to explore more of his character this season. And I can't wait to see where his story goes in season three. So this section of the review is a bit brief. <laughs> Nick's coming out was a very big thing that spanned over the entire season. However, it becomes very clear that his coming out was not only affecting himself, but Charlie in a very, very big way. I will cover this in a few minutes, bear with me, but I still wanted to discuss Nick since this is about his coming out at the end of the day. I love how well put together Nick is. He's a very stable person in a lot of areas in his life and truly has this golden retriever energy which probably helps him a lot. I was really happy that he mentioned to his brother at the dinner table that he loves his life because even I have to admit he has a very well-off life compared to some of his peers such as Darcy which I will be covering next but again bear with me. It takes a lot of strength to come out not just to your friends but to also to your family especially when you're someone who identifies as bisexual because the stigmatization of bisexuality is still prevalent even now in 2024. There are the usual comments of picking a side or that you're most likely going to be a cheater because you play both teams. Some people within the queer community won't even date a bisexual person because of the stigmatizations being so prevalent. I love that Nick, with the help of Charlie by his side, was able to come out on his own terms. I was a bit afraid that they were going to be incidences of him just being outed by other people such as Ben Hope or even by his own brother David. Wouldn't be the first time a family member has outed one of their own relatives. That's unfortunately a story I've heard in the past. Thankfully, in the moments where he does come out, these are technically safe spaces for him. With his friends, once Ben left the room, was a group of understanding people. I especially loved the fact that James asked Nick if he wanted all of them to keep it a secret. That was such a beautiful moment for me because it showcased that Nick was among a group of people that he could trust, which is the exact environment you should be in when you come out for the first time. Now, things didn't go so smoothly for the first time coming out to his dad. Thankfully, David didn't outright out him, but he did unfortunately pressure Nick into just saying it outright before Stefan could pick up on the little hints David was sprinkling around the dinner table. But similar to the scene with his friends, Nick was in a quote safe environment. He not only had his mother there for him, but Charlie's family as well. It's clear that Charlie's parents, especially his dad, loved Charlie very much and wouldn't let anyone say anything negative towards him. And I would like to believe towards his boyfriend either. And then we have Tori, the absolute legend. She would definitely not have let anything slide if that dinner had gone south. So even though Nick was pressured to bluntly come out to his father, he was still in a somewhat safe environment with people who would have stood up for him if needed. And he also had Charlie by his side to comfort him, so that's always nice. Of course, we still have season three, which will no doubt show us the aftermath of Nick coming out now that the entire school knows. Nick and Charlie are dating. With the fact that the show is getting more mature with each episode, I wonder how it will go. Speaking of which, so I have seen a few complaints about the show and I can understand where they're coming from, kind of, kind of, that the show is unrealistic because it doesn't showcase moments of queer trauma and such as though that is the only reality of being queer. I think I've made it clear in my other reactions and my reaction to this show that I just like queer trauma. I just like seeing queer storylines where queer people are miserable and want to die or just get straight up killed off by the end. Which is why I love this show so much. It's a nice palate cleanser from all the misery that I saw growing up. I'll still watch queer trauma if the story is good enough to carry me through it, but it's not necessarily my taste in media and not the first thing I would pick up to watch during movie night. I said something within my review of the first season of Heartstopper, something along the lines of that some queer experiences may be a bit darker than others, but that our experiences are not a monolith. Some of us go through more queer trauma than others while others get to live perfectly good lives while being openly queer. I am very blessed to be from a large family that despite most of them being Latin American Catholics, 
were exposed to the queer community since the late 70s. My family had a deli on the route of the annual Pride Parade in DC. They were there for the very first Pride Parade in 1981 and would participate every year up until the deli was sold. So when I came out to my mother at 13 years old, it was just another Tuesday for her. A lot of the queer people within my family didn't meet hostility when they came out. Maybe some reluctance because my family also knew the pain and hatred that could come with being openly queer in society. But my queer family members were never denied their truth nor were they exiled from the family. We know that we're all very lucky because of this. This is why I don't 100% understand the complaint of this show not being quote realistic because Nick's reality is very in line with me and my family members who have come out as queer over the past couple of decades. We acknowledge that not everyone is as blessed as we were, but our experiences are real too. There's plenty of other media to represent queer trauma if you wanna see it, but don't immediately write off this show as being not realistic because it's not like those other pieces of media. Queer people are not a monolith and experiences will vary from person to person. It's even discussed in Happiest Season when Abby's friend talks about how coming out differs from person to person. Her family accepted her while his didn't. Now, with all this being said, it's a bit funny that this complaint is still being made about this show because it's clear that as the show goes on, the subject material will get more and more serious. How do we know this? Well. First off, <laughs> if you read the graphic novels, which I immediately read volume three after finishing this season, you will see that the characters do discuss more mature things such as sex and drinking as the graphic novels go on. But also, let's talk about Darcy's arc this season. Darcy's story with her mother is unfortunately something a good percentage of people within the queer community can relate to. Even a couple of my own friends could relate to it. Being rejected by your parents for expressing your sexuality and even going so far as to kick you out of the home for not conforming to what they want. In other cases, queer youth simply cannot handle the abusive or hostile nature of living in these environments so they feel like they have no other option but to run away from it. Homelessness around LGBTQ plus youth is a very real reality that isn't discussed much. It's such a big issue that there are actual studies around it. It's a bit hard to pinpoint the exact percentage but it's estimated that between 11 to 40 percent of homeless youth within the U.S. are those who identify as LGBTQ+. And that's just in the U.S. There are groups such as True Colors United and the LGBTQ plus work group at the Friendship Place organization in D.C. that try to raise awareness around homelessness among LGBTQ youth and find solutions to combat that. It's a very real experience for some and I'm glad that the show decided to showcase that through Darcy's character arc. Darcy, since the first season, seemed like someone who was not only out at school but also at home. So for me, it was a huge surprise to her own parents to even know that she's a lesbian. But thankfully, for Darcy's character at least, she is surrounded by people who genuinely love her outside of her parents. And I'm going to guess that in season three, they will be showing her either finding a new living situation, maybe with an aunt or something, or living at Tara's home. She already does sleepovers there, over there anyways. Might as well just do like a permanent sleepover. It seems as the show continues and our characters continue to grow up and mature, the subject matters of the show will become more mature with them which I'm kind of scared of. Okay, so this is a part that's going to be a bit tougher for me to talk about, so if it seems brief, that's why. One more time, here's a content warning. So this season, we've learned a couple of things about Charlie. We learned within the first season that unfortunately he had to deal with an excessive amount of bullying after he was accidentally outed by Tao at school. We never really saw the bullying, but we were given hints here and there about just how bad it was on his mental health, especially towards the end of season one with the scene between him and Tori in his bedroom. Also, it's one of the first instances where we're given a hint of his eating disorder. This season, Alice Osman seemed to be more open about showcasing Charlie's struggles on the show. There is no doubt that Charlie's relationship with Ben did a lot of damage to his self-worth, especially after being ruthlessly bullied by the other boys in his school. His self-worth was probably already in shambles, and having someone like Ben Hope around you definitely does not help. The scene between him and Ben at the art gallery shows us this, with Charlie opening up about how Ben treating him like a play toy made him believe that that was the type of love he deserved. I'm glad that Charlie stood up for himself here and made it clear that although he hopes Ben becomes a better person and hopefully to not hurt anyone else ever again, he won't be there to see it. The scene holds 
a lot of power for me as someone who also said something similar to someone who hurt me in my own life. I'm very much a person who believes that not every apology has to be accepted, no matter how sincere it is. The only thing that the person who is apologizing can do is just move on and try to become a better person, even if the one they apologize to won't be there to see it. That's just how life goes sometimes. As for the person being apologized to, as someone who has been in Charlie's spot, the best you can do is also move on and try to heal from the damage that was done to you. Sometimes you go through it alone, but Charlie is blessed enough to have people like Nick, his friends, and his family by his side. Sorry. <laughs> of course, the first step in this process is usually telling your loved ones what's happened to you and what's wrong. I was genuinely surprised by the fact that Tao admits to Nick that Charlie never ever opened up to him about how bad the bullying was, telling us as an audience that Charlie has never opened up to anyone in his life about what it did to his mental health. Near the end of the show, Nick finally gets Charlie to open up about how damaging the bullying was, even telling Nick that he self-harmed as a way to cope with the pain. Nick already knew about the eating disorder just from carefully watching his boyfriend's actions, but he had no idea just how deep the pain went for Charlie until this scene. His boyfriend not only suffers from an eating disorder as a result of needing something to control after the relentless bullying, but also self-harmed as a way to deal with it. Nick's compassion for Charlie throughout this season, and especially at the end, was so bittersweet to watch in a way. He just wants to understand and support Charlie in any way he can because that is what a true partner does, not someone like Ben Hope. If I keep talking about this, I'm going to cry, so let me just leave it off here. I hope that in season three, we get to see more of Charlie getting to a better place with his mental health, with the help of his loved ones, such as Nick and his friends, and even Tori. It seems that with the help of Nick, he's learning that he's not annoying or a burden on anyone, and those who make you feel that way never had your best interests at heart. I really enjoyed the season a lot more than the first, probably because it deals with heavier subject matters, but also because we're getting to watch these characters grow up and learn more about themselves and the world around them, which makes her very good character and story development. I'm excited to see where season three goes when it's released and also so I can read volume four because I'm not gonna touch it until I see season three. No spoilers for me. If you liked the video, please be sure to like the video. And if you'd like to see more of my reactions, please hit the subscribe button. If you want early access to the extended and censored versions of my reactions, you can do so on my Patreon page. The link is in the description. It is only $2.50 a month. If you also want to keep up with me outside of YouTube, you can follow me on social media such as Instagram and TikTok. But as I said before, I use my Instagram a bit more. Thank you so much for watching Heartstopper Season 2 with me. And until the next video, Bye.